In this video, we're going to talk about non-Mendelian inheritance patterns. Some traits do not show the inheritance patterns predicted by Mendel when he examined the inheritance of several characteristics in pea plants. For example, the red-eye phenotype in fruit flies is dominant over the recessive white-eyed phenotype. But the white eyes only occur in males when the F1 generation of pure strains are crossed. All the females have red eyes, which isn't predicted by Mendelian inheritance patterns, so there arise certain pedigree patterns and inheritance ratios that are affected by principles that were not known during the 1800s when Mendel was conducting his experiments. Inheritance patterns that are non-Mendelian are often linked to sex chromosomes. Homologous means having the same relative position, value, or structure. The autosomal chromosomes typically come in pairs that match in shape and size. The members of each pair of chromosomes are called homologous because they have the same genes along their length. In humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 in total. But the autosomal chromosomes, which are homologous, come in pairs that are matched in shape, size, and gene regions. There are 22 pairs of autosomal chromosomes in humans and one pair of sex chromosomes, either X and Y for human males and other mammals, or X and X for human females. Inheritance patterns that are non-Mendelian um, are often linked to sex chromosomes, as I've stated before. In many animal species, the sex chromosomes are a special pair of unmatched chromosomes that determine the sex of an individual. In humans, the sex chromosomes are called the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. The human X and Y chromosomes differ substantially in size. The X chromosome is more than 150 megabases long with over a thousand genes, whereas the human Y chromosome is only about 50 megabases and only consists of about 50 genes. The vast majority of genes in the X chromosome has no counterpart in the Y chromosome. These sex chromosomes differ quite a bit and have sequence homology of only 2.7 megabases at the tip of the short arm and 0.3 megabases near the tip of the long arm. This allows them to line up during meiosis with only very limited, if any, crossing over in these non-coding regions. This segregation is what allows sex-linked traits to appear. In 1910, Thomas Hunt Morgan found that in fruit flies, genes were present on chromosomes and that the X chromosome carried its own genes. The genes on the X chromosome he called X-linked genes. In his work, Morgan found a mutant male fruit fly with white eyes. He crossed this mutant male with a red-eyed female also called the wild type. In this case, the wild type, which refers to the most common phenotype in a population, is red eyes. The F1 generation produced all red-eyed offspring, which was expected of a recessive mutation according to Mendel's inheritance patterns. When the F1 generation was crossed, though, Morgan found that the white-eyed flies returned to the population, which was again expected according to Mendel's inheritance patterns, but an unexpected finding was that the white-eyed offspring were all male, and that of the males in the F2 generation, half had red eyes and the other half had white eyes. The ratio among males for eye color trait was one to one, but no females with white eyes were observed. All the females had the wild type red eyes. This pattern of inheritance suggests that the allele for white eyes was inherited in a pattern other than the Mendelian patterns that were understood at the time. The hypothesis of X linkage explained the original data, and once you know this pattern of inheritance, genotypes can be assigned to the original flies, with white-eyed males having the recessive allele on the X chromosome, represented here by the W with a minus sign, and it's paired with the Y allele that makes it male. 
and red-eyed females in the pure breeding red-eye strain having the wild type allele on each of her X chromosomes here simple symbolized by the W with a plus sign which is the the wild type allele also, the hypothesis of the gene being linked to the X chromosome allowed prediction of results of the other crosses. One important cross was to mate the F1 female progeny that were heterozygotes for the wild and mutant type alleles of, on each of their X chromosomes. So you see this um, F1 generation female has a wild type and a mutant type. It's a heterozygote with the white-eyed males which results in a one-to-one -one ratio of both wild type and white-eyed males and females as predicted with X-linked genes. In addition to the pedigree patterns in X-linked genes, the Y chromosome exhibits a pattern um, of inheritance because of its association with the male sex. In the SRY gene, on the Y chromosome, it encodes a protein that is the trigger for male development. Y-linked genes are present in a unique region of the Y chromosome where they can't cross over with the X chromosome. If we look at a pedigree chart, we can see that these genes are transmitted from father to son and then to grandson, such that only males exhibit the trait and females do not inherit or transmit the trait and all of the sons of males with the trait also show the trait. Other than maleness itself and some types of impaired fertility, no other physical traits are known that follow a strict Y-linked pattern of inheritance. And this emphasizes the extremely low density of functional genes on the Y chromosome. Genes in mitochondria and chloroplasts also show distinct inheritance patterns that are different from the linear nuclear DNA. Mitochondria and chloroplasts are ancient organelles of eukaryotic cells originally acquired by engulfing a prokaryotic cell through the process of endosymbiosis, but that goes beyond the scope of this particular video. Mitochondria occur in both animal and plant cells chloroplasts occur in plant cells but not animal cells. Both mitochondria and chloroplasts have their own genomes and they're circular smaller genomes that contain genes for the enzymes that carry out the organelle's functions. They also have their own inheritance patterns. In animals, mitochondrial DNA is primarily inherited maternally, so it's passed from mothers to all of her offspring. So for better or worse, we're all a little bit more like our mothers than we are our fathers. Chloroplast DNA is a bit more variable, and although it's often inherited paternally, for passed on from fathers to all their offspring, it can also be inherited maternally or on rare occasions from both parents or biparentally. In humans, there are some diseases that are associated with mitochondrial DNA. These can be traced based on maternal inheritance patterns in a pedigree. Mothers with the trait pass it on to all of her offspring, and then her daughters will pass it on to all of their offspring. Males, on the other hand, as, although they may have the trait, don't transmit the trait to their offspring. Some traits are passed down according to Mendelian inheritance, but others have their own inheritance patterns. For simple traits that are not controlled by multiple gene regions, inheritance can be traced through pedigree charts and genotypes can be predicted based on the inheritance mechanism.